You say when you when you came in, what what year you came in? Ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Yep. What you what you had what you had went in for? Uh, bank robbery and a carjacking. I was nineteen. And um, how much time they had sentenced you to? Uh, three hundred sixty months. So three hundred sixty. You were nineteen years old. Yeah, I was nineteen. For some bank robbers. Fifty two. Yeah. Did you do when you was nineteen? Did you really understand what you was doing? No, nope, that's and that's that's the part I'm gonna tell you. You know, I was, I was I was young. I didn't know. I didn't understand it. And what I did, they just took my whole life, bro. I didn't even get a chance. Right. Yeah. But the lady told me God said I had to go through this because in the end I'm gonna get the money. That's what she told me. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. And like when when I was in prison, I I, I was working in uh, education. I helped a lot of people uh, graduate. Uh, I, me and we we used to do law. I'm 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 basically the administrative remedy person. I do the in house write ups and I do compassionate releases. We we was the one who was like doing all the cases and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I only do like I do gun cases and stuff because that's what I know because that's what I'm in for bank robbery and guns. Right. So you learn you learn all the law once you got incarcerated. Yeah. Incarcerated. I learned everything in, in jail. How how was that experience right there? Just just did you understand law when you first went in? No, nah, I didn't know nothing. How was it like when you when you first went in the, the law library the first time? How was it like trying to? It was it was very overwhelming. They had books then. We didn't have the computers. We had books. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't I didn't know what was what to do and how to look nothing up. You know they don't tell you nothing. We had to we had to actually like I had older cellies, so they actually took me in and and like you know back in the days they didn't let the youngsters just run around and and take drugs like they do now. Cause they got all that paper drugs and and uh, fentanyl drugs. All everybody's on that. Ninety percent of people in the prison on that. On drugs, now? Yeah, ninety percent of them. they they own that. Smoking paper. Hmm. So it was much different than it is today. So back then you had to learn yeah. from from actually going in the books, shepherdizing yeah. the books, reading yeah. cases and searching cases. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, do you believe um, doing it that way is better than being on the computer? No, nah, the computer is more quicker. Okay. Because the books, you have to go to the, the you got to you gotta shepherdize and do this on the computer. It does it way faster. Okay. We had, to book, we had to wait until they get the new book for the new cases. Now, with the computer, they just you download the case. Right, 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 right. If a new case come out, we're not going to be able to get it until they publish that book, and then the then the prison buy the book. So that really was killing us from getting the cases and try to file stuff because we can't do it until the prison get the books. Right. See, that's what I be trying to get these um the, the these young guys out here to understand, man. If they are here breaking crimes, they need to know the law. You need to know know the law, and that's what and see what I stressed in in a uh, prison is. Prison rules. You supposed to know the rules of the prison. These people, you got rights. These dudes think they don't have rights. We had, and I just left. The police find wine in the garbage can. He gets the wine and throws it up in the air and busts it in the middle of the floor. This right, he did this right before I left. Mm -hmm. I tell these dudes, don't clean it up. Oh man, we don't clean it up. He gonna come search the cell. He gonna tell. I say no. I said, I said, if you know the BOP regulations, thirty four point thirty four twenty point eleven. That's uh, the employee standards of conduct. He's unprofessional. He can't do that. And that thing record. And I'm telling them. Now, I've, I've been writing all this up, getting the mood and everything. Right. You know, for jumping on jumping on inmates. Like, I said, one dude, Hernandez, he was just jumping on black people. So I called him jumping on the dude. They locked the dude up. Hernandez talked, yeah, yeah, I did this and I wrote him up. You know, the, the people get it. So they trying to say Hernandez, oh, no, telling me, oh, uh, it's rejected because... Uh, you can't write a, a grievance for another inmate. I said, no, I was a witness to an assault of an inmate. So they had to accept it. And right. I told them I want him moved. They moved him. You see what I'm saying? But right. the inmates don't know their rights. Right. They don't know their rights enough. They're young. They don't know nothing. 
and they're not really concerned about their rights. Mm -hmm. Like, like they come to me and we be for everything, bro. Everything from halfway house to what I got to do here to hey, they did this or how I can do this. They come to us for everything. How many come in there with with a, with a large amount of time and don't even go to the law library? Law library probably have maybe three people using those computers. You got a clerk, and you probably have about four dudes sitting there talking. That's the most people like being in the library. They don't even go down there. They run to the rec yard. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they run straight to the rec yard. Um, how I mean, how were them twenty five years? Well, when you got sent to the twenty five years, what went through your head? Whew. Well, I want to throw the chair at the judge. I ain't gonna lie, it it, it, it told me. You know, I didn't believe. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. I didn't believe that they was for real until I did. Probably by almost almost like twelve, thirteen years. Then I realized that these people are not gonna let me out. They for real. And you know, like I told them dudes here, I said, man, I really. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't look forward to getting out because I thought I was going to die in prison because a lot of people die, you know, in mm -hmm. prison. A lot of people get stabbed. A lot of people die from COVID. So I never thought I was getting out. And like right now, it still don't seem real to me, but I'm out. Right, right, right. Where did you first go at? Uh, when I got locked up, uh, Atlanta, USP Atlanta. It was, it was still a penitentiary then? Yeah, it was a penitentiary, yeah. How, how was your time at USP at Atlanta? Ooh, that was that was the worst time ever. When I walked up, when I went through that little, they got a little like a little um, it looked like a, it's like a dungeon, man. It's like a little dungeon. And then when you go inside, the wall is forty feet, so you look like an ant to this big wall, and it's like real old, real old. And they have you in shackles and handcuffs, and you walking through these cold hallways, and you got to get on the elevator, then you got to go up these stairs, and then they put you in these old cells with bars. It's so it's so dirty and filthy enough. Yeah. And then when I first got there, the police told me I gotta get a knife. I said, why? He said, you got to kill you a couple of people here. I said, oh my God. But <laughs> <laughs> I done did. <laughs> I was like, man, God save me. Now listen, when you was out there in the streets now, you weren't thinking about all that, huh? Nah, uh -uh. I just thought I, I this this like I told my daughter, my daughter was asking me like, Daddy, did you ever think about what you was doing, I say, babe, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't never, I, I only, only, I planned for the next day. I never planned for like five, 10 years. Cause my daughter was like, well, daddy, what about this? I could have had this, you could have. I say, babe, I'm honest with you. I, I was 19, I didn't know nothing. I didn't have no father. He was in prison. My mom was out there on drugs. You know, I was raised by my great grandma. She died, my people kicked me out. You know, so I'm running the streets, you know, they kicked me out as soon as she died. I was uh, I thought like fourteen or fifteen. They kicked me out. I was fifteen. They kicked me out. So I was living in hotels. I was stealing cars. That's what had me. That's why I started stealing cars. And then I was going to jail. So I met these guys that was in the state, and they started telling me about these banks. So I said, "Shit, I can do that." Right. I know how to steal cars, and I started robbing banks. And you didn't know that the, the, the robbing them banks to get you at USP Atlanta? I, nope, I didn't know that. I'm thinking I'm going to get five years or something. Have you ever been to um, state prison before? Nope, never been to none. Only, only the county and to the county work release. So you went from the county jail to straight to federal straight prison? Straight to feds. Straight to USP. Now, yeah. and, uh, it's, it's, it's Weighing to me, 140 pounds. <laughs> yeah, explain to me how that was going to the USP from Florida and um going to Georgia. Yeah, going to Georgia, leaving leaving your family. Um, how old you was? Nineteen years old. I was nineteen. And going inside of a place like USP Atlanta. It was that was a shocker. I, it, it really opened my eyes, man. And I and I realized once they once they got like when I. I first got sentenced, they sent me to uh, Glaze County Jail, Seminole County Jail, Lake County Jail, then they drove me to to uh, Miami Airport. I got on a, a, a Pan Am airplane, like a commercial airplane, but it had all the prisoners on there. They had it surrounded, it looked just like Con Air. I'm talking about, had the helicopter, they had the uh, buses all around, they had AR-15s, I'm like, oh my God. So I get off the bus, the man asked me my number, I said, I don't know it. 
He said, you need to know your number to route, put me on a plane. They flew me to Tallahassee. We, we dropped people off, flew me to Atlanta, got on the bus, went into prison. Man, I was thrilled, man. I was thrilled. It, it, it's like my family couldn't even come see me until I came to Coleman. So my daughter was three years old when I left. Mm-hmm. She's 28 now. Mm. How, how much they, time they, you did at USP They Atlanta? purposely send you away from your family. Yeah, they do that on purpose. Mm-hmm. They don't care where they send you at. They don't care. Um, How much time you did at USP Atlanta? Uh, I did probably like uh, almost like two to three months, and I put in a transfer, and they sent me to um, Edgefield, FCI Edgefield, which was a, which was a, a high. They had uh, towels around it, but they had a gate. They didn't have a wall. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, I know that was um a hell of an yeah. experience to go man, through all of that. My... <laughs> man, I just, I left, I, I, I left, I came, I just left the medium. But before I was at the medium, I was in USD camp. Man, that was the most racist place I've ever been in. My first day, the black hand down there killed somebody in front of myself. Well, you say you was at again? USP Canaan in Can Pennsylvania. They racist. So you saying basically a lot of the officers and staffs and stuff are racist? They ra they only got two black two black officers. Everybody else white. Mm. And they I'm talking about racist. Jump on you. They'll tell you they they'll look at you like you got dreads and you knew they're gonna say, I don't know him, so they're gonna be like, Hey, come here. Turn around, put your hands up. So what they do is when they pat you down. This is this these this is how the officers get away with assaulting you and you can't you can't literally tell the people that they jumping on you. So when he tell you to turn around, he's gonna say, put your hands out. You're gonna put your hands out. He's gonna go to pat you down. When he touch your pocket, he's gonna say, What this is in your pocket? As soon as you go to reach and say, Oh nah, this and you try to pull it out, he's gonna slam you in the snow. They're gonna jump on you. It's gonna be about ten of them, they're gonna jump on you. Mm -hmm. They're gonna whoop you because you're not they say you're not supposed to move when you're pat down. Oh man, man! Yeah, it's the first but, time I ever heard but, that, man. But he go, but he's encouraging. Hey, what that is in your pocket? As soon as you put your hand down, they gonna dog you out in the snow. Man. Yeah, and then sometimes when the dudes that know that don't move, they it's gonna be they gonna be by they gonna be by six of them around you, and they gonna walk in front of you, and they gonna say, "Do something. What you want to do? Do something, nigga. You want to do something? You just gotta stand up." So these they, federal these federal they, officers don't have no respect for the um no for the inmates like most most of the federal prisons do. Nah, they don't. And Canaan, no, mm -hmm. because them dudes killed the officer that before. So they call that they get that. Oh okay. So who mm -hmm. had who had the numbers on that yard right there? Well, I mean, right here, and it's the no at uh, at USP Canyon, yeah. What what that was that? Uh, they have they have uh, about eleven hundred. I worked in the kitchen, so we used to do the food. Was it more? Well, who had the numbers on that compound? Oh, the Mexicans. The Black Hands, the Serranos, uh, the F-13. They all them together. F-13, Serranos, and the MS-13. They was all together on that. Mm. Now, you, you said something earlier. You said that somebody killed the Black Hand when you first got there? No, the Black Hand almost killed somebody. But when uh, when I was there... One of the uh, one of the uh, MS killed one of the black hands. The, one of the old the old dudes that was there. Mm -hmm. They killed him. They killed him in the shoe. In the shoe. Killed him in the shoe. Man, listen. This 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 why these these young guys need to hear stuff like that so they understand this you, shit is serious enough. You know man. they you know they was killing people in the shoe. And these people so crazy. They came so they so they so nasty. Like say uh when we get new inmates come in, when a bus come in, the bus hold probably like forty people. Maybe ten of us might get off that bus and go to the compound. Everybody else going to the shoot. Now if they are chomo or like child molesters, the lieutenant gonna make you go to the yard. He gonna already tell us that we got a child molester coming. As soon as he come in the unit, they gonna stab him. But the lieutenant gonna make him come on the yard. Now I say if you hot and you told on somebody. You tell Lieutenant, yeah, man, I'm hot, man. I, I can't go out there. He gonna let you go to the shoot. But the chomo, he got to come out. <laughs> yeah, you got to go out there and get assaulted They go to the shoot. And then when you go to the shoot, what they do is they get the DC inmates and hey, we're gonna get some extra trade. We're gonna put the chomo in there, get him. 
They put him in with the DC people, and the DC people beat him and, and rape him and stuff, and then the people chained him to another cell. Yeah, but man. But that's what they do. Yeah. It's real deal that's, when you hear this stuff right here, man. It's real deal. I've owned, that's the most racist place I've ever been in, bro. I felt, I felt so, I said I'll never go to Pennsylvania again, ever in my life, because of that. That's Northeast Pennsylvania. I'll never go to that place. And you did a total how long in the, um, in the feds? 28 or 25? Uh, 25 years. 25 years. Did any laws mm -hmm. change? What what was your initial sentence was? My list of sentences is uh, 360 months. But you know you get the game time, so I got the five-year game time. Okay, okay. And I got one year and a half with house right here. Right, right. So I'm going to end up doing 26 years. Man, that's good. Good thing you made it out, though, man. That's that's the most important thing. You that's made what it I out. I told him. I said, man, but the thing about me, a lot of people meet me, they say, man, you ain't burnt out. You ain't crazy. You ain't. How you survive like that? Because I didn't take drugs. I, I, I stayed in the education, the library. I stayed going to the chapels. You know what I'm saying? Doing my little religious service and stuff. I didn't I didn't try to, you know, like I was I was like over the unit and came like for, for the South. I was mm -hmm. the one who ran the unit. And we had a pretty good unit. Our unit went like, it went crazy. But some of the other units, whew. And so many people died. Right. Yeah. What made them send you to that prison right there? Uh, I was in, uh, I was in Edgefield. And when I, when I was in Estelle, South Carolina, when I was in Estelle, South Carolina, uh, the Mexicans all had knives up under the chair. They were trying to stab the black people. So I hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What year you talking about in Estelle? Uh, I, I was in Estelle from 2000. What am I see? Hold on. I think I just. I 2009, just, 2010. I think it was. Okay, let me see. I got to go back in my memory. 2010, I left the medium.